Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Friday Night is Organ Music Night. And tonight we are featuring a lot of exciting music from the most magnificent decade of them all. A decade that I sadly missed because I wasn't born. I'm talking, of course, about the 1960s. We're going to feature a lot of music from the 60s tonight and a lot of music from other places as well. I even have a hymn book ready. Gosh, yes, lots of things happening. Number of requests in... And we are once again featuring an organ that we have not featured for a very, very long time. This is the Prediger Kirche over in Erfurt, which was, back at the end of 22, sampled rather beautifully for Hauptwerk by our dear friend, Mr. Piotr Grabowski. And it's a magnificent instrument, and I'm very happy that we're going back to it, because it's great fun indeed. I hope you don't mind my indulgence. So there we are, we're having lots of indulgence tonight. Indulgence, indulgence, indulgence. And while we're on the subject of indulgence, let me do this and this, uh, just to make sure we're up and running and everyone's happy and we know what we're doing. Pin that message. There we are. So there we are. Be that's before Uzamayo reminds me I have to do it. Now we've changed the wording here. We've changed the wording, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Keep us, keep us funded so that we can keep these streams going. It's very exciting stuff. And I see already someone's been buying a ticket or two. So thank you very much. We're on the road again. Splendid. Splendid, splendid, splendid. Now, I have a list of things from the 1960s here, wonderful things. I've got all sorts of music from the 1960s. I have some hymns, I have some weird music, I have some international music, I have a, I have a request involving something. It sounds Russian, but I'm not sure yet. Um, I haven't decided, but let's quickly remind ourselves. Let's take a few minutes to remind ourselves. Cheers, everybody. About this magnificent instrument, this beautiful three manual instrument. I'd actually forgotten where all the manuals were. This is the great, this is the swell, and this is the positive. It's all up there. Weird, isn't it? One, two, three, that way. And I'd forgotten that. Um, it's got all the goodies you would expect. It's basically a large sort of baroque sounding instrument with romantic features. For example, it's got a lovely big principle here on the great. <laughs> rather lovely. It also has a rather lovely principle on the swell, which is much, much, much softer. Now we have a principal chorus up here as well, which I can sort of do like this. Nice thin principal chorus, and I of course have a very big principal chorus here. which is incredibly big. Now, this manual here is based on a four-foot principle. It only has, it only has an eight-foot flute, but it too has a rather nice principle um, chorus sound. So now we have three principal chori. Lovely. And of course, down in the pedal, we have all sorts of goodies here. Now, I have my pedal camera ready, but I have a surprise down there for you today, which I'm going to show you later. Now, we have a lovely sub bass. Hope you're wearing headphones. It's a nice big bourdon, but it's a nice bouncy one. It has an often bass, which just means an open bass, which is a big woofy thing. But that's not the biggest sound. The biggest sound is the principal 16. Good God. Which is an enormous big bass thing. So now we can make a sort of a principal chorus with this, which is rather exciting. Even with a... Which is a rather big sound. You could even add a posauna 16 to that. Even add an eight foot trumpet to that, or a four foot clarion, or a 32 foot posona. And there's the most important stop of the organ altogether. It's that lovely acoustic that it has. We have some wonderful reeds, trumpet 16 and 8.
And you can actually, if you listen closely, you can hear that they're further away. They're further away than the rest of the great organ. They must be at the back of the thing. There's a lovely oboe here. With a cute little 16-foot dulce on. Which I, lo I love that kind of thing. And because that's fun, we have one up here as well, an eight-foot thing, a trista regal, which means a funnel. And even speaks slowly on hop oh, It has a 16-foot. It sounds like a frog farting, doesn't it? So those two things there. I suppose you've got the trumpet. Oof, which is a nice big beefy thing. Anyway, lots of fun and games. It's got some very old fashioned um, Baroque sounds too. If you're into that sort of thing. It has a rather lovely viola da gamba. Which has a very metallic sound, I think you will agree. There are some cute flutes too. Something happened there. What happened there? Something went ping. Anyway, lovely flute there. Um, two flutes on this one. That's called a Holz flute, which means a wooden flute. Does it sound wooden to you? Nice and soft, I suppose. A Spitzgedacht, which is definitely not wooden. That sounds nonetheless rather cute. And up here, a lovely big eight foot flute. Nice. All the nice little bits and pieces you can find. Let's play a hymn on this wonderful organ and see what we can get away with. This was a request by our friend Georg. Georg from up in Bielefeld, uh, a place in Germany that apparently doesn't exist. But it does exist because I've been there many times. I used to work in Bielefeld from time to time. Right, I don't need my mobile phone there for you all to see, so that's, there's no point having that there. And Georg, or George, requested this wonderful hymn from the English hymnal. Eternal Father, strong to save whose arm doth bind the restless wave, who bids the mighty ocean deep its own appointed limits keep. O oh, hear us when we cry to thee for those in peril on the sea. So to all the, to all the sea dwellers and seafarers out there, this is then for you from George and the rest of the Garchow gang. <laughs> Thank you. 
Oh, I bet that was clipping. It wasn't clipping in these ears, but I bet it was clipping in your ears. Poor, that's pretty heavy, isn't it? Let's tweak the audio a little bit there, folks. I like it. Sorry, I had to tweak the audio there. Was that clipping? Yeah, it was sound. Don Prince, sound is clipping. I thought it might have been. Wow, exciting. Pretty good, eh? Yeah, no, I, I saw it clipping over there, so I, I um, oh my goodness me, yes, my, um, my, my audio interface is on full blast, which is great, because it's fine in here, because I'm doing everything at, like, incredible bit rates, and I don't get that, but when it flies over to YouTube, then, of course, it will be clipping, so, yes, I've turned it down a bit. Let me just double-check, Achtung, as they say in Germany, this will be loud, get ready. That's better. That's better, yes. We're definitely under zero. In fact, I can tell you exactly. Yeah, that's better. There we are. We are under zero dB again. Ah, wouldn't it be great if YouTube was analog and we could have some headroom? Wouldn't that be fun? Anyway, what a wonderful piece of music. I love that hymn. Sounds pretty good on this organ. I'd forgotten how good the acoustic was on this thing. Let's get rid of some of the very, very bright stuff. Um... And just show you what it might sound like a little more romantic. That's a lovely big acoustic, isn't it? Wonderful stuff. It's the funny stop. What is that? Very experimental, isn't it? That's called a bass aliquoter. So it's, in other words, it's, um, it's um, like a sort of a fancy mixture of mutations for the pedals. And it sort of, it provides you with a very soft. It's a harmonic version. <laughs> Sort of like a baroque Hammond organ version of a 16, a very soft 16 foot reed. It's quite cute if you think about it. Ladies and gentlemen, the 1960s was a wonderful, 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 that's not what I want, I want this in my list, there it is. An absolutely a wonderful, wonderful period. Now I wasn't around in the 1960s, but I know a lot of people who were around in the 1960s, and I know a lot of people who made music in the 1960s too. And I, I was very lucky to have met some very, very famous musicians who were around in the 60s playing all sorts of exciting music. And um, yeah, I have a few artifacts from that time, which I will, which I will show you later. Um, yes, exciting things. Um, I was given things. Given things by various people who were around in the 60s. Actual items from the 1960s, original items. Um, and I don't know what to do with them. Theoretically, one of the items is, what, well, two, three of the items uh, would probably be worth a hell of a lot of money to the right collector. But I have no way of proving it, you see, where I got them from. But um, that doesn't matter. Um, I would never do that anyway. I'd never get rid of them because these are my fun things from uh, years gone by. The 1960s was a bizarre period. Um, Lots of experimental things were happening, but at the same time, lots of very down-to-earth things were happening as well, particularly on television. I'm going to dedicate this one to Kristin and Cam Platts, um, and also to Kristin's family, to Kristin's extended family, because I think they will. I think they will get a laugh when they hear what I'm playing. I think they will know exactly what I mean when I do this. <laughs>
the wonderful, wonderful theme tune to Green Acres. Green Acres is the place for me. Farm living is the life for me. Land, spread it out so far and wide. Keep Manhattan, just give me that countryside. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Fun and games. Weren't they innocent times, ladies and gentlemen? I'm sure they were back in the good old days. <laughs> oh, yes, 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 yes. Now, that's not the version I'm looking for at all. That's definitely not the version I'm looking for. Oh, well, never mind. I'll have to make it up. The 1960s, like I say, was a very bizarre time. 1960s was, of course, we're talking... Back at the beginning of the 60s, it's still all very much sort of rock and roll. And in America, in America, you know, lots of wonderful rock and roll stuff. Elvis is still very much a big thing. The Beach Boys are just developing their style. Buddy Holly is sadly gone, along with the Big Dipper and all of that lot. Um, but it's still very much rock and roll. And then suddenly, suddenly, in about 63, 64, this very bizarre mop-headed lot from Liverpool appeared on the scene. Uh, over in America I'm talking about. They were already on the scene in both Germany and the UK. Don't forget, they were famous in Germany first. Anyway, uh, they came and they sort of they took over the, the, the musical world, as it were. Now, we'll get on to them later. Other things were happening in the 60s. People were becoming a bit more, well, shall we say, open-minded about a lot of things. And there were even some musicals written during that time. Um, one of which is one of my favourite musicals of all time because of this actual piece of music. There's a film version of it starring the wonderful Sammy Davis Jr. Uh, Sammy Davis Jr. in all of his psychedelic mastery. It's absolutely wonderful. The piece of music is The Rhythm of Life. Words by Dorothy Fields, music by Cy Coleman. It's from the, the uh, musical Sweet Charity. Mm. Mid-60s, 65, I think. I think it was written in 65, but I think it opened in 66. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I, don't, I don't always have all the facts correct, but I think those are the correct facts for this one. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. And um, this is one of my favourite ones. Now, this piece of music is also one of my favourite pieces of music for my choirs. All of my choirs, since I've been in Germany, which is now, this is my 25th year living in Germany, I've had all my choirs, whether it's been an English-speaking choir, a German-speaking choir, a student choir, a church choir, a, a private choir, a choral society, mm, young people, old people, middle-aged people, mixed ages, whatever, I've all had them sing the rhythm of life in English. And it's been absolutely amazing experience for all of them. I've got a choir at the moment. Um, the youngest person is 18. The oldest person is 91. Sorry, 91 now. Yeah, 91. And uh, that's quite an age span, I think you will agree. And um, I got them to learn this piece of music about, I don't know, about eight years ago, maybe seven or eight years ago. And when I gave it to them, they just looked blankly at me. And the 91-year-old guy, who wasn't 91 at the time, he was still well into his 80s, though. He sort of said, oh, this looks like good fun. Let's go for it. And I said, do you remember this from the 60s? He said, oh, no, in the 60s, I wasn't into music at all. Uh, but this looks like good fun. And he went and learnt the phonetic pronunciation of everything in that piece of music. And it goes at a fair old clip. You know, it starts with this beautiful hymn. And then it immediately spits, speeds up. And then the words start. When I started down this street last Sunday, feeling mighty low and kind of me, suddenly a voice said, go forth, neighbour, spread the picture on the wider street. And the voice said, neighbour, there's a million reasons why we should be clad in all four seasons. Hit the road, neighbour, tell your worries and strife. Spread the religion of the rhythm of life. Right, that's it. And then it changes key. And off it goes into a million different keys and all over the place. Counterpoint everywhere. All four voices doing different things and a melange of wonderful craziness. And they all sort of bang into each other and meet at some point. I'm not going to sing it to you because I'll die trying to remember the words. Um, but let me play to you the rhythm of life.
we go. My goodness, trying to get all the different voices in there. Who says I can't do counterpoint? Me! <laughs> it was a great warm-up piece, says David Stevens. It is a great warm-up piece. It's wonderful. I still do it regularly with all of my choirs. I force them to do it, and uh, they absolutely love it. Right, secret time. <laughs> Normally, ladies and gentlemen, when I play this, excuse me, organ at home, I'm playing without the aid of shoes. I am playing with my socked feet. I am, I'm never playing with bare feet. I don't agree with that. But I'm using my socks to glide over the pedal keys. And very occasionally, I put on a pair of shoes. And sometimes, I even put on these shoes. And I think, I think these, these would be the best invention ever for organists of the testicular variety. I have to be careful what you say these days. You can't say male and female anymore, can you? You'll get into, you'll get into all sorts of trouble. So I'm going to say testicular, um, just to narrow it down a bit. Anyway, um, those of the non-testicular variety, they are perfectly entitled to wear organ shoes with a flat sole at the front and a bit of a heel at the back. However, men's fashion, or oh, sorry, testicular fashion over the years has changed. And, um, and the, the, the heel at the back of a man's shoe has very much disappeared. But back in the 60s, it was still very much a thing. I am talking about the magnificent invention known as the Cuban heel, ladies and gentlemen. Now, back in the 90s, I was visiting a friend of mine. Um, I'd gone from Edinburgh down to the London area to meet with this friend. And... And I just sort of, I'd taken an overnight bag, basically, a sort of an overnight stay, one or two nights kind of thing. And that one or two nights turned into a couple of weeks. So I'd ran out of things, I'd run out of clothes. And the two of us were out one evening and we were particular, we got caught in a rainstorm. We got caught in a rainstorm. When we got back, we were absolutely soaked to the skin. And this, uh, I was wearing the only pair of shoes I had. So my friend said, well, what size feet do you have? I said, I have a size nine. That's a UK size nine. That's 43 in European or whatever the hell that is in American. I don't know. It's, is it 10? I'm not sure. But anyway, size nine, 43. And he said, oh, I'm a size eight, but I've got some old shoes I'm sure will fit you. Hold on a minute. And he scurried off to some part of his house and came back with these. <laughs> these things I'm wearing here. And I, I burst out laughing and I said, what the hell? And he said, oh, they're original 60s boots. And I said, you are absolutely kidding me. And he said, no, no, they're, they're, they're original. I think I wore them maybe once or twice back in the 60s. And I said, well, why do you still have them? Oh, I've still got everything forever. He, doesn't ever th or he didn't ever throw anything away. Sadly, no longer with us, this guy. He never ever threw anything away. So he gave me this pair of boots. And at the end of my stay there, I sort of, I handed the boots back and said, well, thank you very much. It was very kind of you to give me all these things, but, you know, pff, what am I going to do with that? And he said, oh, no, keep them. They're a gift. I thought, oh, thank you very much. That's very kind of you. So I, 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 I've, I, I don't wear them that much because they are tight. I will give you that. They are tight. But these, ladies and gentlemen, are my original 1960s Cuban heeled boots. Get ready for this. Let me actually, hold on. Let me put them on full screen, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let me do full screen on this because I've got them on. Now, here you are. There you are. See, down at the bottom, you can't see that. But look at that. Check the heel on that. Yeah. Diddly -diddly -diddly. Aren't they wonderful? And they're proper, proper boots. There's my pasty leg there. But the proper 1960s boots with, can you see on the other side, with zip. Yeah. Now, over the years, I've had them resold uh, re and rehealed. Rehealed? No. Resold and rehealed. Uh, just looking at it, this one needs a rehealing again. Um, and yeah. But for playing the organ, they're great because, you see, you've got this, look at that, there's hardly any movement there between heel and toe. Normally, you'd be, you know, rocking backwards and forwards to get between heel and toe. But with these things, it's incredibly easy. So just the, the slightest tremor of Parkinson's and you've got a wonderful, a wonderful pedal trill there. Check that out. Yeah. And this is, this is wonderful. I don't know why I don't do it more often. Heels only are pretty good because they're fairly tight around their toes, as you can tell there. Thankfully, they're not the pointy-toed variety from the 60s. They are the curved toe variety. But the rest of them are amazing. Aren't they wonderful? Aren't they absolutely wonderful? So, yeah. I, um, <laughs> I, um, 
I got, like I say, I got these from my friend back in, back in the 90s. And they are original, original, I suppose you could call them Beatles boots, I suppose, if you want. Original Beatles boots from the 1960s. And, uh, yeah, aren't they wonderful? Aren't they wonderful? Anyway, anyway, I also have a winter coat from the same person, an original 1960s overcoat, a real big, thick sort of camel-coloured covered thing from the uh, 60s, and um, some other paraphernalia, bits and pieces. Exciting stuff, and I will never part with them, although, like I said, they're probably worth quite a lot of money if I told you who they were from. But I'm not going to, because that's my little secret for the world. Anyway, on with the show. <laughs> on with the show. So I've, I've got these ready for tonight. I can put my picture in picture there, and we can do it like that. Exciting stuff. On. The bundle of joy is making a noise. Now, we were talking about, um, talking about television shows, weren't we? And there were all sorts of wonderful television shows that started out in the 1960s, um, but also the music for them that started out in the 1960s that became famous in the 70s. Get ready for this. Have they got a four inch heel? Good God, never got a four. No, it's definitely not. It's, it's probably, I don't know, in inches, I would say maybe maximum two at the, at the very back. Nonetheless, very comfortable to play in, just not very comfortable to walk in. Like I said, they are a little on the small side. Ladies and gentlemen, back to the 1960s where this piece of music was written. However, like I say, it became very famous in the 1970s in the United Kingdom when a comedy duo had it as their, had it as their theme tune. Um, when, you hear the, when you hear it, you'll know what I'm talking about. And if you all start the fancy dance, then you know exactly what I'm talking about as well. The song is called Bring Me Sunshine. It's an absolutely lovely, lovely, happy tune. And I think the world would be a happier place if we had more music like this again. <laughs> sunshine so I can't play it any more than that because it's such such a wonderfully simple tune it's gonna be all sorts of copyright claims on tonight's little program I wonder Joe Brown Adrian Morris is telling us about Joe Brown let's have a look at the chat and see who's here tonight let's say hello to a few folks in the chat tonight actually some of you will have wonderful memories of the 1960s and the music thereof so if you have any anecdotes from those days do do share. That'd be good fun to hear. Right, let's go almost back to the beginning and see who's around. Urza is here. Good evening to you, Miss Moneypenny. Wonderful. Splendid. Uh, Xing Chang Chong. Anonym is here. Anonymous. Mike King is here. Max Huber is here. Splendid. Urza. Tamino Rudolph. I love that name. Wonderful name. Cam is here. Cam, I hope the headache is feeling better. Cam's got a bit of a headache today, so I hope the headache is not too good. Hope you enjoyed tonight's concert. Ron is here as well. Oh, Ron is here. Ron knows all about the 60s. Ron, let's talk about Ron Riley and the 1960s. Let's do that in a moment as well. Greetings to Ron. Says Rasbuzz and greetings to Rasbuzz from all of us too. Don Prince is here. Splendid. Adrian Morris is here. Hello. 
Adrian Morris, I spotted you have a little anecdote coming, so I look forward to that. Uh, Jez is here. Hi, Jez. You will have some anecdotes about the 60s, I'm imagining, too. Xing Shang Shang is still here. Julian GC is here. Dan Eichmeyer is here. Hi, Dan. Mike King, Wolfgang Ratzka, Per Tjernström is here. Marek Michalak. And now play the whole fugue. What was that? Oh, that was... I will never play that piece of music ever. Uh, Kamper Krempel is here, built for Bach. Oh, stop it with Bach. There's more to the organ world than Bach. C-O-A-G Music is here, pulling out all the stops. Not quite. Jerry is here. Hello, Jerry. And also hello to Jerry's mum, who's in visiting from Ireland. Hi to you. Splendid. Uh, right, Elam Orenik is here. Steve the Sacristan is also here. Alexander Wunderlich is here. Hello, Alexander. And I'm guessing Steffi is here too. Hi to both of you. Uh, who else is here? Stentor Gamber is here. Splendid. Was ist mit Bielefeld, was Fräse gerade sagte? Ja, Bielefeld gibt es nicht. Das hat uh, Eins Live immer gesagt, oder? Wir haben immer gesagt, es gibt kein Bielefeld. I was explaining there quickly in German. There was a, there's a radio, a radio station in Germany. They always claimed that the town of Bielefeld doesn't exist. It's because when you drive past it on the motorway, on the A2, you can't see any of it. So people think it doesn't exist. Anyway, it does. It's a lovely place. I love it. Thesaurus Rex is there. Hello to you. Peter Rasmussen is also there. Splendid. From Denmark, too. Splendid. Wolfgang Ratzka is still here. Is the tune called Melita? Yes, it is called Melita, which sounds like a make of coffee. Anyway, uh, Chuck Weber is here. Hi, Chuck. Mm -hmm. Monica is here from Ohio, too. Hi, Monica. Johann Östlund is also here. There's Adrian Morris still there. Mm -hmm. Markus B is here. The Blue Eyed Cat is here. Robert Varner is back. Hello. Uh, David Pierce is here. Jeff Ryle. Jeff, hello. Hello, Jeff. I haven't seen you for a while. The last pipe resembles that German church organ that had really unique stops. I beg your pardon, that's narrowing it down a bit. Uh, <laughs> Patrick Peach is here. Oh, lovely. Jim Cascagnetti. Dum, 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 dum. Boo! Does he have a complete sampling of the trippy church organ? What is the trippy church organ? I wish I knew what that was. Tim is here. Cameratim.com. Helder Farinha is also here. Fights. What? I'm not sure how you pronounce that. You're here too. That's very nice. How do you pronounce that? Ursel Dietz is here. Splendid. Does that mean Jörg Dietz is also here? Oh, bye, but a little lady. Who else is here? There's Jörg Dietz. Ha, I knew you were going to be there. Splendid. David Stevens. Petticoat Junction was my favorite before 69. Yeah, I was young. Gosh, TB is here. TB is back. We shouldn't be saying that, should we? That's medic medicinally wrong. Rhythm of life. Splendid. There it is again. Marek Michel. Oh, no, we said hello to Marek, didn't we? Anyone else? Anyone else? Any new names? Joshua McCready is here. Hi, Josh. Splendid. If you are in the chat and I haven't said hello to you yet, do that. Picardy third at the end, says Phil. Yeah, got to do one of those. Um, Tias de Picardy. Persons of testicle. <laughs> there you are then. Snowshoes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You've got to be so careful these days. Saying, you know, I mean, look at, look at, look at. I mean, I, I originally come from Scotland, and in Scotland, you're not allowed to say anything anymore because they've decided you're not allowed to say anything. Even, even what's her name, J.K. Rowling, isn't allowed to say things anymore. But we're not doing politics here because politics is stupid. Jeffrey Ford, Ethel Smith, always played in high heels with at least six-inch heels. I'm not Ethel Smith, and I've never worn anything like that. Have I? At least I can't remember if I did. Um, anyway, moving swiftly onwards. Uh, okay, where are we going? Where are we going? There was a, yeah, There we are. There's Adrian Morris with his um, the guitarist Joe Brown. Joe, I've met Joe Brown on many occasions. Joe Brown is a wonderfully down to earth person. He's he's wonderful. And don't ever get Joe Brown onto the subject of ukuleles or anything like that. He will not stop talking. Wonderful. That's right. You were exactly right. They were a, he had his um, boots that were a gift from Johnny Cash. That's quite right. Very famous for that. Xing Shang Shang is talking about Peter Lustig and Chippendale 
chairs for some reason. I'm not sure why. Keeping up appearances theme music. This doesn't have anything to do with the 1960s. Has a tad of Mac the Knife. Da, da, dee, da. I suppose it does when you think about it. Right. Anyone else with anecdotes? Anyone else? Mike King is here. We said to, hello to you earlier. Casey Latz is here. Hi. The blue eyed cat. Anne Katrin Vogel is also here. Good evening to you. Wir haben in Köln zusammen studiert. Really? Really? Who are you? Can I find you? Go to channel. Do you look like that now or did you look like that? I'm sorry, I don't remember that. I don't remember much about my time in Cologne. When I studied in Cologne, it was the most useless waste of time of my life. Jake Brewer is here. Hello. <laughs> uh, but let's not talk about that. That's not nice. Got to be professional. Yellow Bird. Yellow Bird. Yellow Bird was born in 1967. I thought you were younger than that. Oh, well, there you are. Why is this not going away? Go away. I don't want to click on these things. There we are. Andrew Bazuki is here. Oh, Andrew Bazuki is here. You will have some 60s stuff for me tonight. You always manage to find some really good stuff. All right, how are we doing here? What's happening with this bloody chat? Oh, there it is. Good. Ian Walker is here from Scarborough. Oh, I haven't been to Scarborough for 100 years. I went to Scarborough in about 91. I think that's the only time I've ever been to Scarborough. The Trippy Church was the one that had stops like two, three. Oh, that way. Yeah, that's weird, isn't it? That would be hell to sample. Opus Dry is here. Hello. Mm, all right, have we got everyone now? Ich war an Katrin Leo. Well, that, I'm sorry, that's a long time ago. That's like, that, like almost 25 years ago. I can't remember any of those things in those days. All I can remember is having a huge fight with one of the professors who was a, basically an idiot. But I think I've told you that story many times. Oh, my computer's crashed. That's what, oh God, that's not very good. Damn it. Oh shit. Oh, we could be in trouble, folks. It looks like my computer has done crashed. I can't click anything. <gasps> no, I can't. Okay, that worked. Ah, oh, phew, it's back. It's back. It's back. Right. Ha, ah, moving on. Moving on. Moving on. And country. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. I, let me think about it, going back a very long time. Are you still playing the organ? Do you, do you have a job as an organist now? I wonder. Anyway, right, where were we? The 1960s. 1960s. Now, we had, we've, we were doing sort of various different um, themes from various things. So let's do some film music while we're at it. And this is rather cute film music. I think what we'll do, though, we'll, we'll, we'll do some fancy... We'll do some fancy. Um, we'll do some fancy. Um, some silly registrations. Yeah, I quite like that. I'll do it. Let's have some of this. I don't. Yeah, let's jazz about with this. Here's a piece of music sung by Dion Warwick, written by Bert Bacharach and starring a man with a hat.
<clears throat> oh, excuse me, I'm dying. <clears throat> I'm dying. Every bone in my body is broken. What film was that from? A film from the 1960s. I'm dying. A very famous French actor. Over, overdoing it, really hamming it up. I'm dying. Every bone in my body is broken. I, yeah. Anyone know what film that was? One of my favourite films of all time. Um, raindrops keep falling on my head. Perfect for today's weather. It was absolutely disgusting all day today. It's done it again. My computer seems to... I have a feeling something's wrong with my trackpad. Anyway, let's have a look. So people have been buying tickets on the way past. Werner, my friend Werner has been buying two tickets today. Oh, he's bought some festival tickets already. That's early. Yes, don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, the Gartrell Gang Festival is coming doo -doo 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 -doo, from the 1st to the 5th of May 2024. Yes, watch my recent video. I popped a, a video the other day talking about um, the uh, Gartrell Gang Superstar, Gartrell Gang Festival Superstar. We are looking for a superstar and uh, you have been invited to submit entries no longer than seven minutes copyright free please if possible and um, you know what to do anyway right so more on that in a moment I was telling you talking about tickets so thank you to Werner that's very kind Stefan my friend Stefan has also bought a ticket who this Jan has bought a ticket Thank you, Jan. Who's this? Willie Galloway has bought a ticket. Thank you from you. Uh, thank you to you, sorry. And Jerry has bought a ticket too. Thank you very much, Jerry. Yeah, who's this? Oh, that was Jan, sorry. Sorry, just got that. And who this? Cam. Thank you very much. Splendid. That's a few tickets already. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. Six tickets, ladies and gentlemen. Imagine going to a real concert where you would have to buy some tickets. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, it says there, together we thrive. Your tickets fuel our journey. And in the chat, it says, keep us streaming. What does it say? Keep us streaming. Your virtual tickets make the difference. That's very true, ladies and gentlemen. We're trying to make a living of this. And uh, your help makes that possible. Definitely makes that possible. Right. There you are. That was raindrops keep falling on my nut. Let's go back then to, let's have something that wasn't involved with either film or television. Let's see if we can find an actual, <laughs> this is a hilariously fun piece of music. It was actually, it was actually, it almost didn't happen. Do we have a date for this? I'm not sure we do. Certainly sort of the earlier half of the 60s, as far as I remember. Um, the British invasion had just taken place and various people were trying to cotton in on the act, muscle in on the act and um, see if they could take over uh, the States. And one particular group got together and actually wanted a very famous singer to sing this song. The famous singer said, I'm not singing that, that's rubbish. Um, so they went looking for someone to sing and found, found a young chap and m most of the British people in the audience will remember the wonderful name Bob Kerr. Bob Kerr for various things. Bob Kerr was a wonderfully, wonderfully, wonderfully talented guy. Um, um, he was sort of the British equivalent to um, Spike Jones and his city slickers, that sort of thing. Um, he, um, Bob Kerr and his Whoopie Band, that was his famous band. But back in the 60s, he was part of a very short-lived group called the New Vaudeville Band. And they basically became a one-hit wonder with the wonderful piece of music, Winchester Cathedral. Now, if you know anything about the organ world, Winchester Cathedral has one of the most famous famous organs because of its acoustic. It has the longest nave in, I don't know, in Europe, in I don't know, wherever it is, the longest nave, anyway. it's got a very particular kind of direct but long acoustic, it's incredible. Um, I've, I've been to Winchester Cathedral many, 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 many times, back in the days of David Hill, when he was organist there, uh, and David and I would regularly muck about on the organ and then go for a pint. Um, uh, well, when I say go for a pint, I mean go for pints, plural. Um, those days have gone now. Oh, that's not true, actually. Andy Lumsden, who's the organist there now, I also know Andy. I've known Andy Lumsden for a very long time. I've known him since the 1980s. And Andy enjoys a pint as well. Last time I was in London playing a concert, Andy and I met up and had pints as well. That was good fun. But yes, um, anyway, Winchester Cathedral, uh, sung by Bob Kerr with the aid of a megaphone. And uh, yeah, 
Bob Kerr, lovely guy. Sadly, sadly no longer around. As far, is Bob Kerr still around? I don't think so. Wonderful guy, though. Incredibly funny guy. Um, I used to play jazz festivals where Bob and the Whoopi Band would be playing and... Uh, watching Bob on stage, he would just sit and shake heads at the rest of his band, uh, shake his head at the rest of the band because they were coming up with so much madness. Even he couldn't keep up. And that's saying something. Winchester Cathedral. I should have done cha-cha-cha. Should have had a cha-cha-cha at the end, shouldn't we? Yes, transposition live, everybody. Anne-Catherine also bought a lovely little ticket. Thank you very much indeed. Get in touch. Send me an email. You've got the email. Here, send, put the email address up, please. Somebody put the email address up. Do I play stuff by Scott Joplin? Yes. Shall I play something by Scott Joplin? A spontaneous Joplin. Let's have a spontaneous J-O-P, just make sure. What shall we play from Joplin? Let's play... Let's play my favourite, the pineapple rag. I love the pineapple rag. Let's jazz this up a little bit. Yeah, cool, here we go. Uh, the pineapple rag. Uh, hold on, let me turn my winky blinkies on. So that, that. <laughs> yes, splendid. If I have a minor stroke, it turns pages for me. So that's rather clever. Okay. For my old colleague. Apparently we studied together. I must go back and back in my mind. It's a dark time in my mind. I was still together with my first wife in those days. And I have, I have eradicated all of those memories from my brain. So it's difficult to remember anything I did 25 years ago for that reason. Um, I shall think about that. Maybe it will slowly come back. Send me an email. Tell me who you are and what you're up to. Anyone's got the email address? There you are. Perfect. Gang at gontro.de. The pineapple rag. It says slow march tempo. Well, sod that.
pineapple rag. Ah, I love that. Was it in the sting? It was probably in the sting. Everything was in the sting. Who did the music for the sting? If you get this right, you get a point. Ah, don't say Paul Newman. He was just the actor. Hmm. Splendid. Good for... Oh, Charles Reardon is here. Hello, Charlie boy. Hope you don't mind me calling you Charlie boy. More about Charles Reardon coming soon, ladies and gentlemen. He's about to come to Europe, which is very exciting. And I think we're also going to try to meet up, aren't we? We're going to try. We're going to try. Back to the 60s. I'm too... I'm getting old. I'm getting old. Which means I have to play something like... Oh, let's play this. Will this work? Oh, that might work. Would that work? What chords do these come? It's wrong, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. Oh, minor, minor, minor. Minor. I think the last one is wrong, but anyway. We need some fancy rhythms here. I think we'll come down a little bit. Let's go to here. James Bond was a big thing back in the 1960s, and the James Bond music was never better than in the 60s. And one of my favourite is from the last film of the, of the 60s. This was the one that was supposed to finish off James Bond, because they couldn't be bothered with the rest of James Bond. Um, and they got some guy in that no one had ever heard of. George Lazenby was his name. And um, nonetheless, it was so popular they had to get Sean Connery back. Anyway, here we are on Her Majesty's Secret Service. One, two, three, four. was wrong wasn't it there was something wrong in there da, da, de, good chords though yes it was also the first piece of music by James Bond not to feature the not to feature the rising semitones did you know that even musically they were trying to kill off Bond yes useless fact many many useless facts anyway there you are on Her Majesty's a secret service. Now, of course, that wouldn't be possible. It would have to be on his uh, Majesty's uh, secret uh, service. Oh, what's this? I like this. This might have been a request. Any requests this evening? Let's go and have a check. 
That's the 50s, Andrew. Andrew has just requested something from the 50s. Let's do that on Sunday, all right? How about that? What's this? That's nothing. Updated terms of agreement. Not interested in that. <laughs> Splendid. Right, back to that. Da, da, dee. E, da, dee, dee. Something is wrong with Google this evening. Anyone else having problems? What the hell is it doing? Hold on a minute, ladies and gentlemen. Something rather bizarre is happening here in the background. I don't like this. Let's close that window. Yep, all right. Something weird is going on here with my computer. Is, is the stream working? Is everything working with the stream? Because uh, things are very bizarre here. Oh, my. Good. That worked. That worked. Get rid of that. Okay, as long as the stream is fine. I'm just double checking these things. Something really weird is going on in the background here. I don't want to switch off Chrome because it's doing its thing. There's too many other crap things here open. Let's get rid of some of that. We don't need that. We theoretically don't need that. I do need that. Don't need that. Let's get rid of that. Right, there we are. We've only got two programs open now. So that should be slightly better. Right, what would this be then? What would this be? You know what this is going to be, don't you, ladies and gentlemen? Back in the 60s, Mr. Neil Diamond, I'm going to get into serious trouble for this. I played a Neil Diamond song a couple of years ago, and I was asked to take the video down immediately. So let's see if I'm asked to do it again. But if we're going to play music from the 60s, we have to, we have to play this. This is, this is such an internationally famous piece of music. Um, um, Everybody loves this, especially here in Germany. Everybody loves it. Um, it's sung for some bizarre reason at carnival time rather a lot, which is bizarre because that's not what it's about, but never mind. Um, I suppose that's just the way these things work. Sing along. <laughs>
cha cha cha. I love the music of the 1960s. I just wish I was around in the 1960s. I would have loved to have been born in, I don't know. Well, actually, theoretically, I would have loved to have been born back in ooh, the, the turn of the century for the simple reason uh, I, would have been around, I would have been around 20 years old during jazz time. Ha <laughs> ha! And that would have been absolutely amazing. Uh, I would have loved that. Definitely have loved that. That would have been very much fun. Right, how are we doing? How are we doing? Uh, <laughs> Bert Baharach who died last year, sad, 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 sad. Bert Bacharach has been around for a hundred thousand years, wrote all sorts of wonderful music, um, and one of, one of the best ones would have to be this. It's such an old... It's such a lovely romantic number in the key of E-flat. The key of E-flat, which is a lovely key to play in, but it starts, it starts in A-flat, because it's in E-flat. That makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Um, it's a lovely person. Why do birds suddenly appear every time you are near and then poo all over the place? Just like me, they long to be close to you. Alfred Hitchcock. Why do stars fall down from the sky every time you walk by? <laughs> Meteorites. They long to be close to you. Anyway, and so on and so on and so on. It's very cute stuff. Hal David wrote the words, but Bacharach, of course, wrote the music. 1960. I don't know. When was this? It's earlier than you think. I think this was the beginning of the 60s, 62, 63, something like that. I'm guessing. Mm, I'm guessing. Anyway, let's try this. A nice soft one for a change. Let's go right down to the very soft sound of the organ. Let's make a little Baroque sounding number of this. I could never play Baroque music. I don't think Baroque music is... I just, I'm just not into playing it. It's too much effort. Um, but, nonetheless, it can sound nice if you get it right. So let's see. <laughs> let's see. I'm going to jazz it up a little bit, though, with a tremulant. Let's see what happens here.
That was cheesy, wasn't it? Nothing beats a little bit of organic cheese from time to time. They long to be close to you. There's a lovely version um, by a theatre organist playing... Um, 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 how's it go? Uh, love in, uh, love in blue as a trio sonata, <laughs> which is incredibly difficult to do. And I'm not going to try it. That's how difficult it is to do, so I'm definitely not going to try it. Right, how are we doing? My left hand is itchy, so that means I get to scratch it on a piece of wood and suddenly, boom, you all buy me tickets. Is that not the way that works? Something like that? Not many more tickets have arrived this evening, ladies and gentlemen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven, love is blue. That's the one, says things. Why the boots today, says Charles. Why the boots? Because it's the 1960s, Charles. And these are my 19, original 1960s boots given to me by a 1960s star. Anyway, enough of that. And no, I haven't told anyone who it is because I don't want to. Um, right, I think, ladies and gentlemen, what we have to do now is disappear from Erfurt. Say goodbye to Erfurt and then fly with our private jet across the Atlantic to Theaterland and go and play some jazzy music to finish off this evening's excitement. Now, last week we were doing things with the letter M. I think tonight we're going to do things with the letter... Should we do things with the letter I tonight? Let's start with... Uh, is that off? Yes. Let's start with one of my favourite old big band numbers. Bum, ba -da -da -dum. I never knew. I just saw it on the way past there. Now it's gone. Where is it gone? There's the other I never knew, but that's not my one. There are three tunes called I never knew, and there's, there's my one there. Anyway. Theatre organ time, ladies and folks. Which means we get to go... <laughs> Yes, it's theatre organ time, which means we get to play the big band stuff again. And we're going to start with my old big band favourite from the 1920s, um, someone Fiorito and Gus Can. I never knew a one, a two, a one, two, three. <laughs>
I Never Knew. <laughs> There's another tune called I Never Knew, which is completely different. Uh, completely different. It sounds much more ballady, like this. Very different song indeed, called I Never Knew. Quite good, eh? Quite good. Now, let me change registrations here quickly, and we're going to go back to the 1960s and play a piece of music that became very famous for a guy called... Oh, wait, we need a piano. There we go, we need a piano. Splendid, 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 yes. Yeah, we need a piano for this, and this was Billy Taylor, Professor Billy Taylor, no less, um, with a wonderful piece of music um, called I Wish I Knew How It Would Be, or How It Would Feel, sorry, To Be Free. I Wish I Knew How It Would Feel To Be Free. That's a chart-topping title, if ever there was, isn't there? But, however, and back, well, actually, anne Catherine might remember this, when I was, you know, 25 years ago, when I was an unhappily married man, um, I used to dedicate this piece of music to every unhappily married man in the audience. I wish I knew how it would feel to be free. And everyone laughed, ha ha ha. And we all thought, what a, what a funny man that is up there. But did, little did they know I was miserable too. Gone are those days now, thank God for that. If you don't have a Vanessa, go and get your own Vanessa. Um, I can highly recommend it. Vanessas are wonderful things. It's a bit like sort of everyone talks about Winnie the Pooh being a one. Everyone needs a wonderful Winnie the Pooh kind of thing. But yeah, no, everybody needs a Vanessa. It's a wonderful thing. I wish I knew how it would feel to be free to all of those unhappy folks out there. It's a good tune. It's very sort of kind of gospely, I suppose. One, two, three, four, one, two.
big sound on the theatre organ, isn't it? Great sound there. Ooh, the iPad kid has arrived. Hi, JK. I haven't seen you for a long time. Splendid, splendid. Yeah. Jeremiah the Bullfrog vibe. Ooh, weird. Ooh, Iri is here. Our friend from the Ukraine. Now not living in the Ukraine, but living in the Czech Republic. Which reminds me, I have a request from the Czech Republic, so let's to it. Uh, here it is. This would actually fit quite nicely on the theatre organ. Now this is not um, a request by our friend Iri. Hello Iri. And Marketa, are you here? It's actually by Ir uh, uh, Iri's roommate, uh, Marketa. <laughs> and it's a piece of music in a minor key. It's a foxtrot. <laughs> Splendid, splendid, splendid. Um, and it's actually, in fact, I probably shouldn't be playing this for Erie because it's actually about a Russian person, so we should be quite clever about this, shouldn't we? Um, oh my goodness, this is rather weird. A piece of music is called Major Gagarin. Now he was, he was an astronaut. He was actually not, he wasn't an astronaut. He was, what were, the, what were the Russians called? They weren't called astronauts, they were called cosmonauts, weren't they? He was a cosmonaut, definitely. And um, I'm not even going to pretend to be able to pronounce any of this. But it's an interesting piece of music nonetheless. tune. I quite like it. It should probably be a bit faster, shouldn't it? Anyway, it says Foxtrot. That was a bit of slow fox, I suppose, wasn't it? It could be a bit faster than that. What a bizarre piece of music. Bizarre, 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 bizarre. Take it up a notch. Yes, you're right. Oh no, that was, a, that was the last one. Yeah. Splendid, splendid. You can play whatever you like. I like all your music. You're mad. Nobody should like all the music. Uh, oh no, sorry, right, we are on the jazzy stuff, weren't we? It's getting close to midnight, ladies and gentlemen, which means we all turn into pumpkins and all weird and bizarre things happen. I was on letter I, wasn't I? So let's stop that and we'll go to letter S. And we'll have... Mm, I don't... Oh, we could have that. Yeah. No, I played that not that long ago, so we can't have that again. That was going to be Sing You Sinners. I played that not that long ago. Um, ba -ba 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 -da -da. Let's have this one. Now, any of you who are good at making sort of fancy dances, uh, when I say fancy dances, uh, that, that sort of, if you can sort of wiggle your hips in a sort of a snaky way, back in the 1920s, Mr. Uh, Clarence Williams 
who was a wonderful band leader back in those days, came up with a wonderful tune called Snake Hips, or actually entitled Snake's Hips, um, for some bizarre reason. Bam, 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 ba, da, dam. So if you can do some sneaky, hippy, dancey things, then, well, up you get, and off you go with this little number here. <laughs> Typical old Clarence Williams ending there, which has to be done. The great thing about wearing these, these heeled shoes, Cuban heels, 1960s Cuban heels, will they, will they have a fashion comeback for men? I kind of hope they do, certainly. It's so easy to play the organ with a shoe with a heel on it, so... Love it. Oh, it's midnight. I don't care. <laughs> I'm in the mood now. Uh, oh, is that Cole Porter? Yes, it is. Ladies and gentlemen, Cole Porter, that naughty boy. So in love. 1948. Touch of James Bond, I suppose, at the beginning there. James Bond wasn't the first to have this kind of music.
Have to have a chat, chat, chat at the end of that. Ooh, a late minute ticket has arrived from Nancy. Oh, Nancy's arrived late. Hello. Splendid. Just in time for the end. <laughs> Just in time for the end. We are going to finish off in a moment, but we're going to have some jazzy fun stuff. Uh, shall we do that one, actually? Shall we do oh, It's just gone. Where did it go? There it is. Ba ding ding ding. He's a really fast one from 1910, written by a guy called Brooks. But I wonder, is it Cam's friend Brooks? I don't think so. <laughs> 1910, I don't think Brooks was around in those days. But it's a wonderful old tune called Some of These Days, which is great fun indeed. Ornery Hermit is also here. Gosh, everyone's arriving late. Splendid. Yeah, arriving late. Some of these days, get your dancing shoes on for this one. I want two, three, four, one. <laughs> ended but the melody lingers on yes it's that time of evening folks Thank you. 
song is ended, but the melody lingers on. And I think, ladies and gentlemen, it's definitely time to go home. Well, when I say go home, that means go downstairs, have a cup of tea and a biscuit, and then fall asleep in a corner. It's very quiet downstairs, I suspect. I suspect the ladies of the house have already gone to bed and have fallen asleep. So I am going to finish off this evening's concert with a piece of music called South. South. South, an old 1920s jazz number, which you can really sort of bop around on. I think we need the sort of the more trumpety sound. Those are the ones. South, it's a nice upbeat number. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a fun Friday night, has been organ music night. Um, a few tickets were sold. Not many tickets this evening, ladies and gentlemen. Is it that time of the month? Maybe it is. Gosh, gosh, gosh. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, together we thrive. Your tickets fuel our journey. That's, that sounds like something ChatGPT would come up with, isn't it? Keep us streaming. Your virtual tickets make the difference. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, without your help, none of this would be possible and we wouldn't be able to keep going. So feel free to be... Well, feel free. <laughs> you know what I mean. All right. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tickets other way past. Thank you for the chat. Um, sadly, I can't enjoy the chat too much when I'm busy chatting on the keys myself. Um, but it's great to have you all here. And uh, I look forward to catching up on the chat at some other time. Don't forget, I am still expecting some submissions from you all from the For the Gotcho Gang Organ Festival, which is coming up very, very soon, 1st to 5th of May. Um, and I am looking for musical contributions from you. Um, original musical composition, uh, not compositions, contributions. Don't accompany yourself with a CD for copyright reasons. Perform something yourself live. Record it with your mobile phone, send it to me, and it will be played during the festival. And you all then get to vote on the Garchul Gang Superstar 2024. Oh, yes. Check out my latest video, which explains it all. And uh, yeah, I look forward to hearing from you on that. See you on Sunday. <laughs>